Two weeks later, on a cold and damp February morning at Silverstone, a new Williams Grand Prix car is unveiled to an eager world's press. Andrew Marriott, you're losing more hair. <laughs> Frank Williams, commercial director Sheridan Thin, and technical director Patrick Head radiate confidence for the season ahead. A new aerodynamic shape is the most apparent difference between the new FW14 and its predecessors, while beneath its multicolored skin lurks an improved version of the Renault V10 engine and its most radical feature, a brand new semi-automatic gearbox. After his two years at Ferrari, Nigel has more experience of semi-automatic transmissions than any other Formula One driver. The first laps in the car are cautious, almost tentative, the driver feeling out every nuance of his new steed. Water lying on the track adds a further complication to the driver's task. There is a brief pit stop to check that all systems are functioning correctly. Pressures, temperatures and settings are logged as team and driver begin the delicate process of getting to know the car that will carry their hopes of a world championship win. Back on the track, Mansell, the instinctive charger, comes to the fore and the FW14 begins to fly. An excursion into the quagmire at Club Corner ends the first run of the new machine. The FW14 returns on the end of a tow rope. Despite this minor inconvenience, there are already looks of quiet confidence on the faces of team members concealing the knowledge that here is something special. Well, this morning you, you, you had a spin. Could you tell us about that a little bit? Well, it's more, more down to the track conditions, really. I mean, you probably taking some footage this morning, how bad it was. And uh, with the automatic box, it's a little bit different to the Ferrari one. I changed down a bit too soon and it locked the rear wheels and uh, basically just had a nice little uh, spin and uh, the problem is, as you know, there's been a lot of alterations. We went, I think it was something like about four foot off the circuit, but it was like in quicksand. But the quicksand wasn't sand, it was mud. And it just went, so that caused a little bit of consternation, but uh, no problems. And since then we've done a long run and it's been very reliable. You're really pleased with the gearbox. So does it surprise you that it's, it's gone as smoothly as it has? Yeah, I mean, we've got a few little glitches now, but I mean, we've made uh, tremendous progress, or should I say, Williams have made tremendous progress, because when Ferrari's gearbox came out, we had a job running more than three or four laps together before there was a problem. So uh, I'm, I'm greatly encouraged at uh, how quick uh, we are making the progress which is necessary. How would you characterize the car in, in, as a difference to the Ferrari drive? 
I wouldn't like to at the moment because I think until you put slicks on a car and qualifiers on a car and throw it round the corner and throw it round the circuit, you can't really compare. And you know, we are on wet tyres. We haven't run the car in dry conditions yet. So I think we're being a bit premature for us to try and judge anything. What I will say though is that it gives us every indication that it's going to be a good car. Now, what I say to you now, I mean, this day, the 21st of February, 1991. Let's have reliability this year and we'll pull it off. Reliability will be more important than ever in 1991. For the first time, all points scored by a driver will count towards his final championship score. But reliability is only part of the conundrum. Once a car is sorted and dependable, it must race against the highest quality opposition.